but don't get me wrong. But you see it on the news consistently where the sons of Ishmael are fighting each other all the time. They don't get along with each other. It's the strangest thing. Now, when it comes to hating Israel, they all agree. When it comes to getting along with each other, they don't agree. Now we have Esau in this lineage. Tell me about Esau. Esau is Edom, and Edom is the territory that we would call today the Palestinian territory, which would include some of Israel and predominantly would include the country of Jordan. What does the Bible say about them? They too will dwell with the sword. Now, in other words, they're going to be fighters. Look at the Palestinian people. Boy, you give them a sword, they'd use it. They don't have swords, so they throw rocks. And again, we see this conflict. Come on, is anybody with me this morning? We see this conflict going on now here's what's interesting watch this this is what they're trying to do now the Palestinian people of Arab descent are trying to do this now when you grow restless you will break the yoke of your brother off your neck that's a prophecy Palestinian state they want a Palestinian state now it almost implies here you're going to get restless. And they are definitely restless in Israel. The descendants of Esau, the Palestinians, are totally restless. And they're constantly trying to break what we would say the yoke of Israeli occupation off of their neck. And that's why they keep talking a state, a state, a state. Because this prophecy implies that there would come a time that they would be independent. They would be able to stand on their own for a period of time. And I don't want to get into all that because there are prophecies in the book of Ezekiel that indicate that there would be a struggle over the land, etc. Now, Ishmael are the Arabic-speaking people and the Arabs of the Middle East. E Esau is Edom. He is predominantly connected to the Palestinian people living in and around Israel. Ishmael had 12 princes come out of him, and Esau had two sons with numerous sons that came out of him. For Esau to break the yoke, mm -hmm, and for Ishmael to rise in the, in the end days, the following had to occur. For Esau Saul, number one, the Jews have to have the land of Israel and be in conflict with them. I'm talking about for the prophecy to be fulfilled. Number two, the Jews have to rule over them and they have to become restless. Number three, Esau has to raise up and break the yoke off of, his, uh, off of their neck. And this is the Palestinian issue. This is what they're trying to do with the Oslo Accords and the agreements. For Ishmael, the Arabs had to have a series of independent nations surrounding Israel. From 15 1917 to 1917, they were under Turkish rule, and the Turks were mostly nomads living in the desert. After World War I, Britain and the U.S. began to set up Arabian uh, oil. Prince Saad, who was a friend of America in the 1920s, allowed America to come. They dug seven wells in Arabia and found nothing. They tried one more well. Guess what happened? They struck oil. Check this out. The U.S. gained rights to Saudi oil for, with nine hundred thousand dollars in gold and and began to uh, look over and take care of one hundred and twenty thousand square miles in Arabia for over sixty years Saudi Arabia Iraq Iran Kuwait Bahrain United Arab Emirates Qatar there's about eight states that are rich in oil by the way according to a, uh, uh, information I received the United States had access to oversee this oil since the 1920s and the access ran out in 2006. In other words, and I'm not saying that they haven't renewed contracts because I don't know how this works, but I'm saying the document I read that told me told, was about American history said that it was to go up to a certain period of time. And so, uh, interesting, isn't it? Chavez in uh, Venezuela, you know, Pat Robertson got on TV and talked about what an evil man this was and, you know, America better watch him and it might be even good to consider the CIA taking him out and the press jumped all over Pat. Oh, what a fanatic, what a nut, this man's insane, blah, blah, blah. Now the whole U.S. government realized Pat was right. Chavez, you know what he did? He called all the oil companies in and made them sign the rights of everything over to him. He's a dictator. And uh, talks about the destruction of America, gets up at the UN and says, Bush is a devil. What kind of man is that? 
trying to build his military. He, by the way, he is connected to Al-Qaeda. He's letting Al-Qaeda agents into his nation. Okay, so sometimes men that seem to speak out and be bold on what they say are not as crazy as some people think they are. Because they see into the future and they're not just looking at the present. Somebody shout yes if you understand. Let me go through this very quickly. We keep following Ishmael and Esau, and let's go all the way up. Let's, let's skip through time, the Babylonian captivity, on and on and on. Let's go all the way to the New Testament. Jesus had 12 disciples, 12 men. One was Judas Iscariot, Iscariot. Matthew 10 and 4. Judas is the Greek form of the Hebrew Judah. Most people don't know that. Judah. Now, Ishkariot is a small town located in the tribe of Judah, according to Joshua chapter 15, verse 25. 20, I'm sorry, verse 25. Ishkara means strangulation. Lightfoot said the name was given to him after Judas hung himself. The death of Judas... He was called by Jesus the son of perdition in John 17 and 12. And the Bible says he went to his own place at his death, Acts 125, which it would have been hell. Now check this out. Just like John wrote about the Antichrist and talked about Cain of that wicked one. The Antichrist is called son of perdition in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. Judas was called the son of perdition. The Antichrist is called the son of perdition. There is a great scholar. I've studied after him, a Greek scholar by the name of Kenneth Weiss. Now, the only area I've ever disagreed on anything I've ever read by Weiss is who he believes the Antichrist is. Because Kenneth Weiss has a teaching where he suggests that because Judas is called the son of perdition and so is the Antichrist, that Judas went to a special place in hell, that he believed that Judas, that deadly wound that was healed, the Antichrist has a wound of death, but he comes back healed, that Judas is going to be pulled out of the pit, out of the place where he is, and going to come back and going to serve as the Antichrist. Now that's a very, uh, you know, now again, he's got his little points and his little evidence for it, but I personally could not agree with that because the spirit of Judas has been out of the body. The body has already deteriorated. That would have to be that Judas would have to come back with a spirit body of some kind that couldn't even be killed. Because how many of you know once you leave your body, your spirit's eternal. You can't stab it. You can't, you know, you can burn it, but it ain't going to burn up or anything like that. And so it would take a resurrection of Judas and another death of Judas after uh, 1900 years. But I'm not sure about that at, at all. The seed, however, of the Antichrist, the bloodline is, is traceable through Cain, through Nimrod, through Esau, through Ishmael. It's definitely traceable through that. Cain is of that wicked one. Judas is called the son of perdition. Now, having said that for several years I remember when I first started about 18 19 years of age becoming interested in prophecy then I went to Israel for the first time in the 1980s how many were on that first trip raise your hand do we have anybody that was on the two of you praise God we're gonna give you a diploma for that hallelujah we went on the first trip. That's when I became interested in prophecy, when I found out about the earthquake fall line on the Mount of Olives, when I found out about those birds of praise that were heavily populating there. And I remember coming back and beginning to teach what everybody else was teaching. You know, you're a young preacher. You're kind of parroting what everybody else said. Well, first thing I found out was Anwar Sadat had a peace treaty with Israel. Good gracious alive, he was the king of the south, according to some, and he had a peace treaty. Good gracious, nobody ever made a peace treaty with Israel. So I got up at the Bob White Boulevard Church of God in Pulaski, Virginia, 1980, and told them who the Antichrist was. Dear God, they shot.